Welcome to the wonderful world of dance, bringing you exclusive interviews with top dancers and choreographers and reviews of the world's best companies across the globe. You can find lots more on our website at thewonderfulworldofdance.com. Hi, this is Savannah Saunders from The Wonderful World of Dance, and today I'm super delighted to introduce Alberto Preto, who is a ballet dancer with the Ballet Trocadero de Monte Carlo, the company who is affectionately known as the Trox across the world. As a global sensation, they are the foremost all-male comic ballet company, and they perform in numerous countries and are just about to embark on a UK and Ireland tour, which starts in September before they head back over to New York in December. So let's welcome Alberto. Hi, Alberto. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. So you're in New York at the moment. Correct. And getting ready to pack your bags and head over to the UK. Yes. So for the listeners who may not have heard of the company before, tell us um, about the company in your own words. Le Ballet Trocadero di Monte Carlo um, is a company that was founded in 1974. Um, and uh, grew so much bigger from its beginnings because uh, they started off just a group of amateurs and they were doing some, uh, basically some drag shows uh, dressed as ballerinas uh, off of Broadway, theaters off of Broadway. And uh, since the humble beginnings, the company has been changing and had the chance to perform in Mo- the most renowned theaters all around the world, such as the Bolshoi, the Kennedy Center, and um, the quality as well of the performers has changed immensely. So now it's really important to have a very strong classical training when you join the company um, because it's going to be required for the work we do. So essentially, we have the, as you say, highly trained classical male dancers who are performing what essentially is a comic ballet company, but quite seriously, you're on point, you're in tutus, you're you know, wearing fabulous costumes, but actually performing quite seriously, as well as having a really great time and, and presenting a fantastic show. Um, What inspired you to join the company in the first place? Well, I had a um, um, a very traditional, um, you know, ballet training. And um, once I graduated from um, ballet school, I, you know, auditioned around and trying to fit the mold of the male a uh, ballet dancer. However, I don't think I really fit um, in what was uh, required. And after a few experiences in different, uh, in different tr- more traditional ballet companies, I just realized that was not the right place for me to be. And so I just started feeling this eagerness to do something different and have more... Um, you know, more experiences and more chances to express myself as an artist. And how did you come across the actual company? Um, Was it while you were living in Italy or? Well, at the time I was uh, dancing in this company in Germany, um, Stadttheater Koblenz. So just um, the, the company of, um, of the city of Koblenz in Germany. And um, as I told you, I was, I don't know, I didn't feel I was very um, stimulated artistically. So I started looking around and um, I always had the, this love for point shoes that um, I always nurtured my whole career. But, um, you know, I couldn't really do it as a regular, regular company. So um, I started having this idea in the back of my mind that I was going to audition for drugs. And uh, so I, I asked the director, um, Anthony Taylor, if I could start training on point um, during the normal, uh, you know, normal ballet class every day. And uh, he was very, very supportive. And, Fantastic. Uh, 
And he was just like, yeah, sure. And uh, I remember that, um, you know, and we also did a lot of operas and um, we had like this Orpho- Orpheus comp- um, opera and um, there was a, I got the part of a flower. And I remember going to the costume department and the, the sketches where, you know, it was representing this beautiful costume actually with some pants, green pants, and then out of the pants, came out the petals in pink and uh, the artist sketched some uh, ballet, sh- like a uh, point shoes, you know, with the ribbons up the, the ankles. And, um, but I was not supposed to do it on point. It was supposed to be on, on flat. And I said, well, why don't I just, you know, do it on point. And uh, we tried it out and it worked out. So that was my first, if you want, approach on point. And, um, and then, and then I w- took a plane, um, to uh, Italy because actually the trucks were touring in Italy and I was in touch with the ballet master. I knew where they were going. And so um, with the help of my family, I just flew over and uh, I waited for the bus, the company bus to arrive at the theater in uh, Piacenza I auditioned. And uh, I took company class. They seems like they really liked me I had to wait a little longer though because there was not an opening at the moment in the company but like a few months later I officially joined I'm really interested to um understand this obsession with point shoes which I completely understand who isn't because they're gorgeous and point is beautiful where the, where do you think this sort of you know love came from well, it's just, you know, okay, starting in every ballet school as a kid, as a male dancer, you don't really see a lot of guys. I mean, the guy, I was, yeah. I remember in, uh, in, in Vicenza, I was the only, I was the only guy. So like, all you can relate to is your friends that are girls and all they do is, you know, they put the punches on and it's kind of like for a ballerina, it's such an achievement and an important step in your upbringing when you get to wear those satin, you know, point shoes. So I think that I got very influenced by this and um, I just in the back of my mind, I always wanted to do it. Also, um, there is something about going up on point that is this, this different feeling of, you feel lighter and more elongated and just it's yeah it's worth trying it's That's worth so the pain it's worth the pain i would say <laughs> <laughs> and you you mentioned there that you were in about you were in your a ballet company um when you decided and to actually train to go up on the point and like you say as a as a young ballet girl you know you you work up to it and you finally get allowed to get up and you know start doing your releves and and you know go up on the point and you're super excited so you're a bit older you're in a company and you're learning point how did your feet physically um and your legs respond what was that process like for your body well, it's, it wasn't like, I, I put point shoes before, like, um, really, like, <laughs> hiding, really, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. but, um, at the bar mostly, so just, you know, to, to reinforce the strength of the ankle and such as, but, um, but when I decided that I was going to audition, I really started from scratch, so I started training with young girls just like beginner point and it wasn't a lot of fun but um i think it was very useful because i gained the strength and the endurance and all i needed for uh, to do point work which is completely different from a man as well because we have uh you know we're heavier so it's a different amount of weight that goes on point and when I first started the pain was incredible (laughs) and um, I remember just like being on tour and crawling off bed to go to breakfast and not be able to stand up for a good 10 minutes until (laughs) it's kind of warmed up so yeah the beginning were um, yeah intense 
<laughs> it, it, that sounds intense. And it's, it's interesting because when you think about um, male dancers uh, on point and um, you don't really, and you think about, well, you know, how does it feel? I, w I wasn't really thinking about, you know, the additional weight that would bear down onto your, your feet. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And so what sort of shoes do you wear as a male dancer? Obviously bigger feet and your, you know, the shape of your foot is quite different probably. Yes, yes. It's, I get, it's much wider, I guess, for, um, for boys. Um, hopefully, not hopefully, um, luckily I don't have such a big foot. So I, I pretty much find it easily. But um, I, we wear gainers, gainer minden. We wear a lot, like we're almost the whole company were Gainer Mindens um, because, you know, they're based here in New York and um, they're really great shoes. So we, I wear my Gainers. And do you have a, okay, a lot of a lot of female dancers, obviously, they carry their kit around with them and they've got their process of preparing their shoes and taping up their feet and do you go through the same sort of process when you're preparing for your performances yes uh well with the gainer the uh the process of preparing the point shoe is is much shorter than a regular point shoe because it, i remember when i used to wear grishko or whatever other brand you need to break them in and, you know, before you actually feel comfortable on the shoe, there is a long process. With gainers, they're kind of like ready to go. So um, once you sew the ribbons and you do whatever you need to do, I take a couple of classes before so that I sweat in the shoes and I feel them more um, on my feet, but that's about it. But of course I do the whole, you know, taping up and, ouch pouches and whatnot yeah i guess everyone on point must go through the, exactly the same thing it's yeah. the same process no doubt so enough of talking about point although i could talk about point shoes all night <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um you know the company tours you perform so much tell me what are your favorite roles that you perform and why well the you know, my most favorite role is Giselle, as everyone know in the company. <laughs> uh, they kind of make fun of me as well, because as soon as, you know, the f I hear the first note of Giselle Adagio, I'm just like dreaming. Um, just because I, you know, it was my, one of my first very important roles that I got, and I got to dance it um, at the Joyce, which is our usually important season here in New York so um, it was it just held, holds a very important place in my heart this role um, and then recently I got to dance Swan Queen which is beautiful of course yeah. who, doesn't, who doesn't want to be you know every but, every girl and boy's dream <laughs> yes absolutely so um, I love that role very much um, and I got to dance a lot of uh, exciting things in the company. I did Esmeralda, which was my, um, my bread really for more than three years in the company. Um, we have, um, Esmeralda Padesis is the version with the gypsies and she's heartbroken and, and I can relate a lot to those romantic roles because I am not much of a, you know, virtuoso, but I'm more of a dramatic ballerina. So all the Giselles and Esmeraldas are mine. <laughs> they, they see you, do, do they? Yeah. Artistically and personally. Yes, yes. Quite well, dramatic. Trying, right. Well, I'm also, you know, I'm trying to work on my um, weaknesses as well and trying to get um, to do those uh, super technical ballets such as like Paquita and um, you name it, I don't know. So I'm trying to get to different roles as well. Um, and you've got names within the trucks and you have two, um, not just one, but two. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those. Well, we, uh, every dancer in the truck has two names, which is the first one is the male dancer and the second one is your ballerina name. So in the moment you join the company, they assign you these names 
and uh, they come with a little bio, and you can all find out the the very their very very funny bios. You can find them on the website trucadero.org. And um, so my uh, ballerina name is Nina Immobilashvili, <laughs> and my boy name is Stanislas Kokic. Very dramatic names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell, us, well, tell us about the backstory to these. Um, they, well, the, 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 the bio says that I have files on every uh, dancer existing, so I'm really the terror of the dance <laughs> world, and I know it all sort of situation. Um, but um, as I said, these are names that uh, the, the director likes and assign you with those so um it's up to him to decide what what name is yours but we have a very very funny names that joke with um uh we have helen high waters nina in Eeny, meeny, miny, mova. it's really hard for me to say and, uh, a lot of funny names yeah so Oh, that's fantastic. So tell me, what do you love most about dancing? I love everything, really. Um, I, love the, I love the music. I love the relationship with the music. Um, I love this obsession that every dancer has to be better, to do, you know, that we feel like we can't skip a dance class because it's the end of the world. And, um, but there is such a beautiful feeling about going to, to the studio and just forget about everything else and diving into the work. And, um, yeah, I just love, I just love that. And there's not a day that I can, you know, pass without dancing or without thinking about dancing. It's and, just beautiful. And not to mention, like, the fact that we get to connect with so many different artists and different people. And there is this, like, common camaraderie, if you want. Like, this, we all are there to share the love. It's, it's really beautiful. And... You're on, the, you're on the road quite a bit, you know. I think your UK and Ireland tour has got just a string of dates yes, for you. it's one of the longest tours that we are going to have. It's quite scary, actually. <laughs> well, hopefully the weather release will be pretty good. <laughs> Won't be quite so miserable in the, in the dead of winter. But what, what's, what does life on the road with the trucks look like? Tell us about your days. Yeah, well, it's, they're very intense. Days are very intense, yeah. Um, you're, you know, you're away. You're on the road for, like, two months at the time. So um, you are also uh, together with your truck family the whole time, which um, creates a lot of uh, good, you know, chemistry and, like, friendships really really strong um so well a regular day we're just like depending of if it's a travel day or a performance day if it's a travel day it's just like you know airport to bus to every sort of travel uh that you can <laughs> think of and yeah um, that sounds like a long, long tough day some days no doubt Yes, yes, for sure. And then sometimes we get the leisure to have a beautiful day off and just, uh, you know, uh, explore the city we're in. But if we are in the theater, we normally go to the, in the, into the theater about, I don't know, 1 p.m. sort of. And then we will have a dance class, normally at 2, followed by two hours of rehearsal. And then they always leave us an hour, an hour and a half before the show in order for us to do the makeup, the hair, um, and then transformed as a ballerina, you step on stage and it's another three hours of dancing. And then we usually uh, try to get some food after the show. And if the adrenaline is really high, then you chat or you try to unwind. And 
it's really late and then <laughs> the day after it starts over again. So. so you mentioned hair and makeup and yes. um, for those who uh, are listening, please get onto the Instagram um, or on the, the Trox website. I think as you mentioned, trocadero.org or check out Alberto's Insta, um, which is at I'll be pretty or pretty, which is at A L B Y P R E T T Y. Just so, whilst we talk about hair and makeup, you can actually see the amount of work that goes in. And, and of course, all dancers have to put on um, makeup, you know, yes. for all of their performances. But, I, but it, it seems like there's a bit more work that has to go in. Tell us about Absol- it. Absolutely. So, first of all, don't forget the 85 after the I'll be pretty. Oh, thank you. That's Let- all right. I, have so- two, I actually have two. You were right because I have an at I'll be pretty which is my dancewear line on Instagram. Which we'll be talking about shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at I'll be pretty 85 is my personal account. Perfect. Um, so, um, yes, it takes longer because, I mean, we're men. So um, in order to give the illusion of a ballerina, it just takes longer time and a crazy amount of foundation and makeup and lashes and and lipstick but um it's all part of you know the the transformation is part of the the magic of the show i think and uh it to me is one of the most enjoyable parts and you must have obviously had to learn all of this makeup yourself um how how long does it take is it quite a because uh, the out, the outcome is incredible it looks amazing Thank you. Um, it takes, you know, it takes long. It depends on the person. It depends on the person. I, uh, I can do it in one hour. I can do it in 45 minutes if I'm really, like, pressed for time. But um, when I have an hour and a half, I, I'm sure I look better. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned there your dancewear line and I really wanted to talk to you about this as well because I was uh, going through your Instagram feed and loving the dancewear line. Tell me about how this started. Well, it started with a friend of mine, the company, and we both had the same kind of fascination for... um, for leotards, really, because I like to wear le- girl leotards in class. And uh, so did he. And um, we got together. And at first, I was sketching. And he was doing most of the uh, sewing. And then and then somehow, um, he said it was too much for him to handle. So he taught me a few things about sewing. And I tried it to see if I was going to make it um, on my own, which which I did, and um, I figured out a few things on my own, and um, I went also to FIT, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology here in New York, to, you know, study some more, and uh, my best friend is um, he's in fashion as well, so he taught me a, a handful of things. So now I get to sketch them, produce them my own, and, and do it all. And I noticed um, the drawings that you've got on the T-shirts of Svetlana and Misty, for example. Yes, yes. Are these the all incredible drawings? Thank you. Thanks oh, so much. I wasn't sure if they were, they were yours. You're so multi-talented. Yes, yes, they're mine. I, I, I always like to, uh, to draw and paint. And, and I, I was doing the T-shirts for a while. Well, I just, you know, sketched someone that I look up to and then we print it down on the t-shirts and they were they are selling really well so I think I should go back to do more of those I, um, I saw some quite famous names on your Instagram feed who are wearing your lovely leotards um, yeah, uh, yeah I have a lot of beautiful ballerinas that are incredibly supportive and I couldn't be more grateful uh, for them. Since- it's very, it's, it is, it is wonderful. Um, and your designs are beautiful. So I wanted to make sure that we gave a bit of a shout out so everyone can go and have a look at your Instagram much. feed and then check out your Etsy store. Um, when you're heading over to the UK, um, there's also going to be a screening of um, a film called Rebels on Point. Yes. Is this a film that you've been involved in? 
Um, yeah, it was filmed while um, I was in the company. Um, however, this uh, documentary um, focus on, I want to say five different stories. Okay. Um, and I'm not one of them in the, in the movie. Okay. But yeah. you can see me, you can still see me dance a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there is a few moments that are really cute on the bus and it's a very nice documentary to learn about the company. And as you've danced all around the world, what's the reaction been like and the feedback from audiences? Um, the audiences are very, very uh, enthusiastic all the time. Um, it's, we, cannot, uh, mm, we cannot, you know, we don't know how it's going to be until we actually we actually are on stage but sometimes we're really surprised about how warm and uh just uh how warm the people are and we had some incredible incredible performances where i felt like i was a a rock star just oh. you know and there were standing ovations and oh. it's it's really really fun to perform with the trucks and also like there is not such a sometimes in the more traditional companies, you finish a variation, they don't really know if it's okay to clap or the response is very like, you know, very polite, but, but no, with the trucks, like, you know, there's a laughter in between your variation and someone gives you a little woo <laughs> and it, it just, it just feels great. Sounds like quite, quite a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> And what, do, what sort of feeling do you want people, um, the audience, to take away with them when they curtains down and they're heading off home? What sort of feeling do you want them to take away with them? Well, it's hard to, to say because everyone is entitled to their own approach and um, everyone can receive, perceive whatever they want to. So, well, I hope they're going to have a good time and go home with a smile on their faces. But they can also be... They can also relate to to it in very different ways. Um, it's very unpredictable their reaction. Well, I'm I'm personally really looking forward to. I'm definitely coming to see your London show, which is Yay. down at the Peacock Theatre. <laughs> um, before we um, talk about. Um, the website a bit more. Um, I just wanted to ask you. It's. It's a very unconventional company, um, as it, you know, it's a comic ballet company, but very serious. You, know, you, you guys are very serious artists. You take your dancing, your dance careers as serious as any other dancer out there. Um, and this might be sort of music to the ears of other young male dancers out there who would think, well, actually, this is the type of company that I think I could fit into, or this is something I'd love to do. What advice would you give to those other dancers who would either love to dance on point or, you know, do something considered slightly different or look to join the trucks themselves? Well, I would advise to um, don't get discouraged and uh, mm. to keep your dreams up and to work as hard as you can and also always, you know, always try to put those point shoots if you want to ask your teacher ask uh, whatever because um don't be afraid don't be afraid of putting the point shoes or sometimes people because they're not used to it they react to it and they're like oh you want to put point shoes are you okay are you gonna get hurt just say no i know what i'm doing and um you know and just embrace it and if you're dancing well no one will will deb double guess that and uh, yeah, just uh, follow your dreams. Well, I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys in, in London. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. So, again, check out the website, trocadero.org. Um, the UK and Ireland dates and locations are also on the danceconsortium.com website. And Alberto's two Instagrams, just to make sure I get it right, at I'll be pretty 85 and at I'll be pretty A L B Y P R E T T Y. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got some incredible interviews coming up with principal ballerinas and renowned choreographers. We love dance and ballet, and we hope you'll love us. 
Join us on Facebook and Twitter.